right friends welcome back to questions and answers discussion the first question the basis for calculating the gross domestic product is the location the basis for calculating the gross domestic product gdp is the location location or geographical boundaries of the country whereas for gross national product it is based on the value created by its nationals absolutely correct gdp is within boundaries GNP by the nationals of the country, the value created by the nationals of the country. For a country like China, if you look at for example, for a country like China, GNP is more than GDP, absolutely wrong. For a country like China, GDP is more than GNP because several multinational companies established their manufacturing basis on the coastal areas of China in the economic zones. So, here GDP of China is much higher than GNP of China and whereas for a country like USA, GDP is more than GNP, absolutely wrong. GNP for United States of America is greater than GDP because several multinational companies of America are establishing bases in several countries. So, this is very important point, probably many of you may miss the second point. Right. So, one only correct. So, please correct the second sentence. Look at the next one. India Post is going ahead with Pan India plan to open 650 new branches for payments bank and recruit 55,000 Grameen Dark Savaks. Under this context, look at the following sentences. Here, payments banks can accept deposits up to a maximum of rupees 1 lakh. Absolutely correct. Payment banks have to depend upon fee income very important they have to depend upon fee income that is one part second part is they have they have to depend upon interest primarily from government securities they have to depend on interest primarily from government securities as they are prohibited from lending activities payments banks cannot issue credit cards they can issue debit cards they cannot lend Another important aspect is 75 percent of the money, please understand carefully, 75 percent of the money is to be deposited in government securities and 25 percent they can keep with other banks like in fixed deposits right? or current account deposits. They can keep 25 percent of money in other banks and 75 percent, this is very important, they have to invest in government securities. So, this is very important and the minimum capital prescribed for payments banks is rupees 100 crore, for universal banks it is 500 crore and please do not forget payments banks, small finance banks, they are examples of differentiated banks or NIC banks, please understand. So, here 1 and 2 is correct, third one please correct, it must be 75 percent they have to invest in government securities. Real effective exchange rate, REAR is a measure of, here the currency is measured with regard to the currencies of its trade partners. If you look at India, it is calculated for 6 trade partners as well as 36 trade partners. So, here real effective exchange rate is the measure of valuing the currency against the currencies of its trade partners adjusted for inflation. This is very, very important. India releases this index for 6 countries as well as 36 trade partners. Second point is, if real effective exchange rate is greater than 100, if it is 110 at present, India's case is, it is around 110 or so. It shows that the currency of the nation is overvalued. The currency at present in our country is overvalued. When the currency is overvalued, what happens? Our exports will become globally uncompetitive. If the currency is undervalued, then exports will become globally competitive. So, this is very, very important and at the present juncture, Indian currency is overvalued and if it is below 100, it is considered as undervalued. So, this is very, very important if you look at real or real effective exchange rate, right? Look at the next one. As per government's solid waste management rules, 
government released solid waste management rules. Look at the following sentences. It brought into its fold very important solid management rules are applicable for industrial townships, harbors, ports, defense establishments, places of pilgrimage and historical importance. Then generators of waste, if I am generating waste, I have to pay user fee, I am generating some waste, I have to pay user fee basically to collect it. That means, for the waste collector, I have to pay user fee then there will be spot fine for littering. Another important aspect is resident welfare associations, big townships as well as big apartment owners subject to certain limits, they will have the mandate to segregate garbage. The resident welfare associations have to segregate the garbage or pay a massive fine, they have the responsibility of segregating the garbage and they have the responsibility of in fact composting the kitchen waste. So, these are as per solid waste management rules of 2016, please do not forget. Government recently launched Pradhan Mantri Yuva Yojana. This Pradhan Mantri Yuva Yojana is development entrepreneurship for youth, entrepreneurship in 3050 institutions at a cost of around 500 crores, entrepreneurship skills will be developed and the purpose of this Pradhan Mantri Yuva Yojana is to develop entrepreneurships, entrepreneurship skills across the country for the youth. So, the government's intention is more and more startups should come up. Right friends, look at the next one, money laundering. This is one important area, all of you must have clear idea, money laundering takes place money crosses the boundaries, it crosses the boundaries through under invoicing of exports, exports are under invoiced and another important aspect is over invoicing of imports, imports are over invoiced and through under invoicing as well as over invoicing of exports as well as imports, money crosses the boundary and this is because of exports or imports of mercantile goods. So, this is the basic problem, how the black money causes, crosses the boundary of the country. One way is Hawala route, it can cross, then second point is under invoicing as well as over invoicing of exports and imports of mercantile goods, then money laundering can take place. Money laundering is basically flow of illegal money, right? Flow of illegal money takes place through under invoicing and over invoicing. Which of the following was created to promote the ENAM? Here certain things you should not forget. Long term irrigation fund, this is to increase irrigation potential of the country. This long term irrigation fund is maintained by NABAD. Rural infrastructure development fund or RIDF, this is also maintained by NABAD. Here one important point is, if the banks fell short of the priority sector lending, then they have to deposit this money in IRIDF. Then Agri-Tech infrastructure fund, this is created for expansion of uh, electronic national agriculture market in our country, please do not understand, please do not forget. Interpol, Interpol is uh, quite frequently in the news and what do you understand by Interpol? Interpol is, first one is wrong, it is a governmental, intergovernmental criminal police organization. When someone talks about Interpol, it is governmental, intergovernmental organization, it is not a non-governmental organization. Second one is, it is headquartered in France. Third one is, it focuses on public safety, battling terrorism, crimes against humanity, genocide, war crimes, etcetera. So, two and three is the right option. Next one is, safeguard duty is in the news recently. Look at the following sentences, I would like to tell you anti-dumping duty, anti-dumping duty is imposed when the imports are coming to the country, 
at less than market rate, less than the real value required, less than the market rate. If imports are coming to the country, then anti-dumping duty can be imposed. Then the second one is countervailing duty or anti-subsidy duty. When the products which are being imported into the country, enjoying several subsidies in the country of manufacture, then you can impose this anti-subsidy duty or countervailing duty. The third one is safeguard duty. Safeguard duty is the temporary measure which can be imposed when there is a sudden increase in imports when there is a sudden increase in imports which is causing injury to the domestic industry, then you can go for safeguard duty, right. It is WTO compliant, all the three duties are WTO compliant. Wallonia region is in the news recently. Please do not forget, European Union recently concluded free trade agreement with Canada which is properly known as CETA. CETA is the free trade agreement which was concluded between European Union and Canada and in the process what happened, one particular region's parliament has not passed this for some time that Wallonia region is in Belgium, the answer is Belgium and more than that, please understand this, European Union and Canada recently concluded free trade pact which is known as CETA. Look at the products which were given geographical indication status. Recently, two days ago, Banginapalli mango was also given geographical indication status and Banginapalli mango is a specific to Andhra Pradesh and here five products are given, Songli raisins, bead custard apple, Jalna sweet orange, Vaigaon turmeric, Purandar fig and out of this five, which belongs to Maharashtra origin, in fact all belongs to Maharashtra origin. Geographical indications registry is in Chennai, it is under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, specifically speaking, it is Controller General of Patents, Designs and Trademarks. This is under the Departmental Indus Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion or you can say DIPP, right. Please do not forget, as per our National Intellectual Rights Policy, DIPP is the nodal authority, please do not forget. Look at the following, Jika, Dengue, Chikungunya, Yellow Fever. Last week, we discussed about various vaccines, the vaccines pertaining to malaria, Zika as well as Ebola. Please recollect those vaccines and here look at the following diseases. Which of the above diseases are caused because of AIDS, Aegypti, Mosquito? Here all four are caused by AIDS, Aegypti, Mosquito. Please be careful about this. Then the setting of the price of goods or services, I told you several times, certain words you should not forget, advance pricing agreements, transfer price. Here the setting the price of goods or services sold between the entities within an enterprise. You can say the parent company Hyundai Motors, they manufactured Santro here. So, if Santro is sold to its parent company, what should be the price? That is transfer price. Have you got the point? So, Jaguar Land Rover, Jaguar Land Rover, let us take that. Let us take one example of this motors you are familiar with, that is a Hyundai. Hyundai car company belongs to Korea. So, if the car is sold to the parent company, what should be the price? That is transfer price. Next one is Sharia banking is in the news. Read the following sentences. Charging of interest is prohibited under Sharia banking, very important. Sharia banking does not talk about interest. Second one is Sharia banking primarily runs on the principle of risk sharing. That means, profit loss must be shared among the lender as well as the borrower. So, here the principle of Sharia banking is sharing of profit and loss and interest is prohibited, right. So, two are correct. Look at the next one. Common reporting standards 
on automatic exchange of information is in the news recently and all of you please do not forget the multilateral competent authority agreement. India is a signatory to multilateral competent authority agreement and under this agreement the, the free flow of information or you can say automatic exchange of information will take place among the member countries automatic exchange of information will take place among the member countries. This is as per MCAA framework, India is already signatory to MCAA probably from September 2017 this sharing of information for India will come into force. Then for sharing information or for automatic exchange of information for easy understanding by various countries what is required? The required thing is common reporting standards or CRS. So, CRS on automatic exchange of information is in the news. This is as per multilateral competent authority agreement. This is piloted by OECD, right. So, OECD, India is not a member of OECD, please understand. Look at the next one. Delhi High Court crashed ban imposed on 344 fixed dose combination drugs. Please do not forget Corex, cough syrup, Vix Action 500, these are all examples of fixed dose combination drugs and look at the sentences. Fixed dose combination drugs are costly and to be sold under the prescription of a super speciality doctor. It is wrong, fixed dose combination drugs are being widely used, they are not costly, they are just like any other medicine and two, three formulations are combined and the point here is government banned them with the reason that they are having some side effects and there are several other reasons also and proper approvals are not being taken for fixed combination drugs. So, here the first sentence is wrong. The second sentence, they are used for treating diseases like cancer AIDS only, this is also wrong. So, both are wrong, they are just like any other drug. Redemption of 26 billion dollar FCNRB deposits. In fact, the government or you can say the central bank mobilized FCNR deposits of 3 years duration in 2013 and they came for redemption in 2016 and the money was withdrawn after the maturity period that is known as the redemption. So, the 2013 deposits came up for redemption in 2016 and here this happened without currency volatility, everything went on smoothly. The people feared that it may lead to currency volatility, but everything went on smoothly and look at the following sentences with regard to FC NRP deposits. These are the deposits by NRIs as well as persons of Indian origin with the banks in India, absolutely correct and FC NRB deposits are only fixed deposits, please do not forget. So, the second one is wrong, FC NR deposits are maintained in various foreign currencies, they are only fixed deposits minimum tenure is 1 year, maximum tenure is 5 years, this is about FCNR. At the same time, do not forget about NRO deposits, NRE deposits, NRO and NRE deposits are rupee denominated deposits and these are also meant for NRIs and these can be maintained either in savings account, current account or fixed deposits, but FCNRB deposits three things do not forget, one is these are maintained in approved foreign currencies, second one is these are the deposits by NRIs and PIOs, they can be opened for fixed deposits only, minimum time period is one year, maximum time period is five years. So, here one only correct. In recent times we are hearing about biometric authentication, biometric authentication in fact, the Aadhaar number has got total 10 fingerprints, 10 fingerprints 
as well as the two iris abstract. So, your unique identification authority of India biometric authentication consists of iris abstract and fingerprints. These two are known as biometric authentication tools. So, if someone talks about tools of biometric authentication, they are iris abstract and fingerprints. Please do not forget because this biometric authentication quite frequently in the news. In recent times, we are hearing about minimum import price on various steel products. Government imposed minimum import price on various steel products. Which of the following describes the decision to stipulate MIP here? This is to protect the domestic steel industry against cheap imports. And here one important point I would like to tell you, article 11, if I am not wrong, article 11 of GATT, article 11 of GATT says that minimum import price cannot be imposed, but there are some exceptions to that. There are some exceptions under some other article, but strictly speaking, article 11 is for preventing minimum import prices, right. So, the purpose of minimum import price is to protect the domestic steel industry against cheap imports in this particular case. Small savings schemes, please do not forget, small savings schemes are administered by the finance ministry and interest rates are being announced once in three months. These things are very important. Small savings schemes, they are administered by finance ministry, the interest rate are announced once in three months and normally the interest rates on small savings schemes are linked to the returns on government securities. Government, whether it implements or not that is different story, but the interest rates on small savings schemes are normally linked to the returns on government securities. So, when you are talking about small savings schemes at present, the highest interest in small savings schemes, please look at that aspect. I think two schemes enjoy higher interest in small savings schemes, senior citizen savings scheme that is one and the second one is Sukanya Samruddhi Yojana. These two enjoy higher interest in small savings schemes. Right friends, we deliberated several aspects. So, we will meet once again on Monday and Monday 11 o'clock, this revision class will be there. 11.30 Q&A discussion, please do join for 6th session on Monday and during this weekend, we are going to upload several modules. Please go through them, have a nice day and have a nice weekend. Thank you.